Hello, hello. Welcome to Rise Above with Tammy Lynn. I am Tammy Lynn, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak into your life, to empower and encourage you to continue running your race, fighting the good fight of faith, and finishing strong in Jesus' name. So I have just had a heaviness, somewhat of a concern for several days, perhaps even leading into like a week. And it is regarding the voice, the voices that people follow. One of the things that um, I do not desire with this YouTube uh, ministry channel is to first of all get accolades for man um, or to have followers of Tammy Lynn because I promote others to follow Christ. I have heard a lot of people in how they begin their messages, you know, make a disclosure and say things like, you know, test the spirit, take this back to the Lord. I kind of understood it, didn't understand it, wasn't compelled to do that with my videos. Um, but I've actually kind of... <laughs> I'm at a point now that I'm like, okay, I, I believe I actually can see it. So I think they learned some things that now I am learning. I am a work in progress. Thank God I'm making progress and I do desire to make progress. Um, sometimes I will put out a video and then immediately I will just start getting these emails and I have just seen just so much like confusion. And I know that's not what I come on to make these videos for. What I've learned is I hear him. So I have assumed, and I do believe that nothing happens by coincidence. And I do believe if somebody is led to my channel, it is by the Holy Spirit. Um, but what I've learned though, is not everyone, everyone may not be where I'm at. And what I'm seeing is some people hopping from one YouTube channel to another, from one prophetic voice to another prophetic voice, and then they're, they're just getting confused. <laughs> and I'm like, there's one voice. There's one voice I want to hear. There's one voice that compels me to come on here and to feed his sheep and empower his people and to love his people. It's just one voice. And I can recognize the voice of the enemy. And I can even recognize the voice of others. That if something does not bring me peace and it's not something that the Lord has already spoken to me, then it's not something that, you know, I come into agreement with. So the other day I had a very special sister in Christ, um, such a beautiful divine connection. She sent me a screenshot and had the scripture in it. And like I knew the Lord was speaking and I love that he gave me the scripture because it's actually a standing scripture for this message that I'm delivering. Then um, I did a coaching session with someone and he gave me the offer, that affirmation, the affirmation in that session that again, this is why I've had kind of this burden and this concern as well as why I needed to share the scripture. Then this morning, um, I actually came across something and to be honest, I'm not there is um, a few channels, one in particular, and y'all heard me speak of it, Watchmen um, on the Wall. There's a few of them out there, so please be careful. Um, if you're not sure which one it is, then let's talk about it so I can help get you and, and connect you with the, the correct one. Um, but it's truly a spirit-filled um, YouTube ministry channel, very trustworthy, and uh, releases prophetic words from trustworthy voices of God, people who have a genuine heart for God and uh, hear him. And I am honored because um, at times whenever a, a word comes to me, then that channel releases it. And I'm truly honored um, to be a part of that. So, but I don't go around, I'm not looking for all these affirmations and confirmations. I don't crave prophetic words. Um, I actually feel we need to be very careful with that. And some of you who I've even done some life coaching sessions with, like you're getting to know me. I mean, God will use me for affirmations and confirmations, but I don't want to come on here and like, I'm telling you, like, this is, this is what the Lord is telling you. 
I'm releasing what the Lord puts on my spirit and what I'm learning is perhaps not any of the message is for everyone or not all of the message is for everyone. And some of you are like, that was all for me. <laughs> Glory to God. I mean, because I want to bear fruit and I want to help. I want to help people on their journey. I want to help you run your race and I want to help you do it correctly and free in Christ and standing on his word and making him, making sure he's your one and only true God. I mean, just, just all the stuff that is important. So, but this morning I'd actually, and just, uh, just a long story short on it, I had realized I'd come to find out that a video that I had released recently because the Lord gave me a word and the title of it says, don't sign the divorce papers. I'm very confident what he, he spoke to me. And um, I realized that there was someone who listened to that and it brought that individual major confusion and they ended up sending a message to another channel that uh, is all about Sanders. I know I do a lot of Roar of Restore, but Rise Above a Tammy Lynn, is, it's not just about kingdom marriages. Um, actually, while I'm doing this one, another one's getting ready to upload. Um, and then this one, I mean, it's, so I'm just, it, I just have surrendered to a full-time call to ministry. And it's not just about kingdom standards, but that has been an emphasis because he's given me this war of restore over kingdom marriages. But that's not all that I'm anointed for. Like Isaiah 61 is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I'm compelled to set the captives free. Okay. Um, so anyways, I realized that this standard had became confused with that message and sent this message to this other um, ministry channel that is just about standards and don't know too, too much about her. But the Lord confirmed to me. And so I'm here and I'm going to share the scripture and I'm going to begin with because he doesn't, he's not an author of confusion. And just because he's telling me something, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all, take it back to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to minister further to you. Anything I release, it is going, it is going to either be an affirmation or a confirmation, or it's gonna be a new revelation for some. I am very confident anything that I say, it's not, it's not for my accolades, it's not, to gain subscriber, subscribers, it's not based off of my personal opinion. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to dishonor God in this ministry that he's anointed me for. So I'm very careful with that, not to get in my emotions, not to get into my flesh and not to lead his sheep astray. So he's not an author of confusion. <laughs> he's the author and finisher of our faith. John 10, 27 my own sheep will hear my voice and I know each one and they will follow me. You're a sheep of God. God speaks. You know his voice. You also need to be careful because there are a few other voices. And that's why he says they know my voice and they follow me. You will have the voice of others. You will have the voice of the enemy. And then you will have your own voice. And we need to make sure our voices are lining up with the voice of God. Because if God is decreeing it, we need to be decreeing it. And that's why I've, I've even said, we need to be careful about who are we, we are going to confide in, who we are asking for them to uh, pray with us or for us, who we're going around asking their opinion Asking, did, did God give you a word for me? I don't, I don't do that. I know that I hear God and I will release a prophetic word. And unless I'm in a conversation with you or something, I just, I'm really careful. And the Lord showed me some people will try to draw off your anointing and draw from you. Like I'm getting emails. Do you, do you interpret dreams? Do you, that I'm not going around and telling, saying I'm a, a dream interpreter. Do I, do I have the ability? Does he cause me to know sometimes? Yes but I'm not taking people's money for that. That is not my focus. He'll position me when he wants that to happen, but I'm not gonna get into responding to emails. People sending me their dreams, want me to interpret it. I, I, don't, do, I don't do that. <laughs> and I've gotta respect the anointing and, and the call. So he says, my sheep know my voice, you know his voice. And he says, they will follow me. So you got to be careful, especially when you are standing 
uh, on a promise that he's given you when you are asking God to do something specifically for you and you are wanting wisdom with that and because you love him so much and you hunger and thirst for him and for his ways you are you are seeking him to see what his will is for that situation so you have got to hear him the people of God he speaks he speaks right here he speaks right here he speaks right here hold on he speaks right here. I got two more over here. Do I need to keep going? He speaks. So my friend it was really interesting that she sent this to me. Like this is like so gone. But she sent it because she had said, you and I are a lot alike with this. Well, I'm going to read the scripture. And this is 1 John 2. And I'm going to begin in verse 26. I've written these things about those who are attempting to lead you astray. But the wonderful anointing you have received from God is so much greater than their deception and now lives in you. There's no need for anyone to keep teaching you. His anointing teaches you all that you need to know for it will lead you into truth, not a counterfeit. So just as the anointing has taught you, remain in him people of god you have to remain in him you have to my I, my hope is is that you have ultimately heard him if you're standing for your marriage if you're standing for for healing if you're standing for um a child that has strayed away from the lord i mean whatever you're standing for i hope i not pray that you've heard him because he speaks right here Everything you need to know about every situation you are facing is right here. I am seeing people who are not going right here. And they are YouTubing it all day. Almost every day. And God will use these YouTube ministry channels to feed his sheep and to empower and encourage and bring confirmations and affirmations. But if you are just going to them... Because that title is what you want to hear, but it's not what the Lord has told you. You're making the battle a lot more difficult. There is a spirit of confusion attacking God's people. And it didn't come from God. And I know I'm certainly not operating it. And I'm certainly not bringing it. I don't come on here to bring you confusion. I release what I have a strong conviction about. And what I'm very confident that the Holy Spirit is leading me about. Now, uh, the video that I had released, again, for just an example of just so many, was don't sign the divorce papers. Felt that very strongly. It caused confusion for someone. And they wrote another channel. Because they felt the Lord was telling them something different. Abide in Him. Whatever He's told you, to do do now i'm going to say this i know what the lord has showed me about the spirit of divorce which is also a spirit of death and because of a big part of my testimony and certainly the reason why he has put this anointing upon me for this ministry he's called me to is because i am not going to attach to the spirit of death in any way. I'm going to stand firm on the word of God. Now I'm going to share something. We all have our personal testimonies. I have my personal testimonies. Not going to share like unless the Holy Spirit tells me to share something, then I share it. This morning he led me to share something. And I have even like, okay, like I just want to make sure. Okay, I'm sure. And so I'm going to share something. Years ago, I was married, and in 2007, and not to go long into the, that, because this ministry isn't about me, this, I'm here to feed you his sheep, and when he wants me to share something, then I will, and I'm looking forward to release one day to even share more. Months ago, I shared, I mean, kind of a part, so I mean, it comes out according to whenever he wants. Today, I am to share this part. And so I ended up going through um, this divorce. 
And he told me to stand. And I stood. And it was 2007. And me and my oldest girl, we were living uh, in 07 like it was in heaven. And people wasn't understanding me. And they would say things like, no, really, Tammy, how are you feeling? Like I was crazy. Their question sounded crazy to me. Because you can have a peace that surpasses all understanding and a joy unspeakable when you are in a midnight hour. And this is what the Lord has taught me. So I was good. And though I was going through a divorce, I had began to serve him greater. And I began to go into the prisons and begin to do prison ministry. And I thought I was just going to go in and move some seats around because just being a humble little servant. But it was immediate. He put the microphone in front of me. And I began feeding his sheep and setting the captives free. And then on top of that, I started my bachelor's. And there I was, a single mom, and I was going through a divorce, and the Lord told me to stand. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you the end of it. Because he didn't tell me he was going to restore the marriage. But I stood for a year. And in that year, he kept me in that house where I was and the car that I was driving that my ex-husband had bought me. And he had given favor to me through my ex-husband. And the Lord did give me a word and he did tell me that our paths was going to come back together. I also knew that deep within his heart, he really didn't want the divorce. But a longer story short with that, I, ha I had a call of ministry and I accepted that. And he did not want that. And even though he wasn't the perfect husband and there was sin in it, I'm not going to bash him for that sin. Because I give God glory for him. Because God did bring our paths back together. And he has a profound respect for me. And I'm still praying for him. Because <laughs> God loves him. And I have a love for him. And he was a father. He became a father to my oldest daughter. Because I had had her out of wedlock. And she didn't know her bio father. That's a whole other story. I'm telling y'all. I've been the woman at the well. I've been through some stuff. Again, you listen to that first video. Too much is forgiven. Much loves. But anyways, so for a great part, he, he was a good man and he has a good heart. And to this day, he still does. But the Lord had me stand for a year. And honestly, I thought it was because, you know, <laughs> he's going to come back praying in the Holy Ghost and we were going to be doing ministry together. And then after a year, the Lord said, it's time to move forward. I was shocked. <laughs> kind of went through a moment. Like, well, what is that about? Because by this time, I had numerous people coming to me with marital issues and I was speaking into their life and praying. And I was seeing marriages restored. And then after a year, he's telling me to move forward. It made no sense. Now that I've come to learn everything, he never actually told me he was going to restore the marriage. Because when we got together, it was a flesh thing. And that will be more of my testimony later whenever he tells me to release that. But he's, he's not wanting me to go all into that because it's really it's not about me. He's, he's trying. He's sending me to help somebody. And I will tell you, when we went through that divorce, I was never moved about the need for a house or the need for a car. I was moved by the word of God. And God took that crisis that had hit my family, my marriage, and it brought me closer to him. So the enemy thought that would be the end of me, but instead I actually started doing more ministry and then I went and I enrolled for my bachelor's of Christian ministries. And during that time, I had received a call from a old neighbor and she worked at a very large oil company. And she says, hey, Tammy. And by the way, my middle name is Lynn. I have another last name. I like to be Tammy Lynn. So some of y'all think like my last name is Lynn. That's not it. My mama called me Tammy Lynn <laughs> and I like Tammy Lynn. And that is the name the Lord has given me for the season. So that's why I go by like Tammy Lynn. But anyways, before all that, people would call me Tammy. It's Tammy Lynn now. Thank you very much. I like it. Um, but she's like Tammy. I have a friend um, here at my work and she's selling her home and she's really needing someone to clean her home. And I just know how you are like with your house. Didn't know if you knew of somebody. 
I immediately said, I'll do it. I'm thinking no big deal. Now, this had actually happened right before um, my marriage was um, at its end and before I found out some stuff and we needed to be separated. And um, anyways, so I went clean to that house. And from that day on, my phone started getting blown up with people from that oil company. And a long story short, three months later, after he had left, which was in the best interest, because things he was doing was bringing major warfare into our home and with my little girl. And the Lord wasn't going to have that stuff attached to her or to me. But I faithfully stood. And I didn't sign the divorce papers when they were first presented to me. All that to say, the Lord has also showed me because I'm not a woman that could be found to have put her hands on a divorce. I have not always been a perfect person and perhaps wasn't the perfect wife, but God hates divorce and I will never speak of it. And the anointing is greater upon me because my hands are clean from it. And I'm not saying that if any of you have signed the divorce papers, that is not a conviction. Condemnation. That is not what the Lord is saying. And if he told you to do it, then he told you to do it. He didn't tell me to do it. That's okay. And when I released that message recently, because that's what I heard him say, don't sign them. Now, I'm getting somewhere with part of my personal testimony. So I had found favor and it was with the house and the car. And then after a year, when the Lord, or let me finish with the cleaning. And so three months into it, because like it was going crazy. And by this time he was gone and um, I was doing like medical transcription at that time. And I wasn't the one really making a lot of money. He was pretty much the one like was making all the money and paying all the bills. But the Lord showed me that he is my husband and he is my provider and that is the testimony i carry so i was not in a position to where i was dependent upon some man or fear of losing some home or fear of losing some car because i knew who he was and to this day i know who he is and when he told me so he, he ended up blessing me and I long story short with that 12 years, I had a successful cleaning business in Oklahoma and I wrote solo a lot, but I got into commercial and he used me to bless the hands of other single moms and college students. And three months into it, I was in a client's home and it hit me and I turned the vacuum off and I raised my hands like this and I said, Lord, what are you doing? Are you blessing my hands to bless the hands of other single mothers? Three months into it, 12 years later, sure enough, he did. God got all the glory. And he literally used toilets to divinely, divinely connect me to clients. And 95% of those clients, I can tell you something that happened behind closed doors. And the majority of them that the Lord would give me a word and I would release that word because it was always ministry to me. And I was driving home one day and I'm like thinking, this is crazy. <laughs> like people really need their house clean that much. Because I know how to clean my own house. I can be a wife, I can be a mom, single mom, whatever. I know how to clean my house and go to work too. I went and get it. And the Lord spoke to me. He was looking to and fro to see who would humble themselves so that he could send them in as a vessel, as an ambassador. And I have countless stories. Countless stories of him doing it. And I had the most profound respect and honor from all of my clients of the 12 years doing it had a very high retention. I actually ended up letting two go. <laughs> I mean, that's a hundred story because it was time for the door to get shut and the assignment was over. Every house was an assignment. And one of the homes, it was the more the assignment was them for me because she has become my spiritual mother. And she understood my craziness, my dreams, my visions, <laughs> it's the way I hear God. And so she, she embraced me. And every month I would grow. We, we had beautiful conversations. But anyways, all that to say, I sought the Lord and favor found me 
from the beginning of the process of the, the, the divorce through the, the middle of it and even when it came to the end and when it came to the end and he said it's time to move forward he also had me release the home back to him in the car and I never fought him for it and then a few years later there was um, a pastor who at that time he actually was pursuing me but blah 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 like that didn't work out but anyways <laughs> I would love to talk about that one but no not today anyways um, I remember him saying to me you know Tammy you will be more powerful in ministry as a single mom than if you were married and I remember thinking okay well that was him just telling me that okay we're not going to work out which it pretty much was <laughs> um, but I heard a voice of truth in it and it wasn't until years later even now that I understand it because I never for I, I never signed the divorce and then we actually both drove to to the, the courthouse together and matter of fact it was uh, so it was in 2008 and we actually had gotten together and did fourth of July together and then a few days later it was at the courthouse and we drove together there was healing and there, there was peace and to this day that man has not uh, spoken anything ill about me In fact, up until last year, brought me to Florida. He was wanting to go out again. But anyways, that's a whole other story. Didn't happen. That door was closed. And, and he knew that was for the best. But we're cool. But I was never compelled to fight him because of a need for a house or a car. I was just moved by the word of the Lord. And the Lord told me to trust him. And the Lord said he was going to show himself to me as my provider and as my husband. And he did it. And I'm a hard worker. And I ended up starting this cleaning business like right in the midst of a, a, of a crisis a marriage crisis I've never I've worked since I was 16 I've never had an issue with working so when that pastor said that he felt that I would be um, a greater example more powerful as a single mom I get it to this point and I even have to be careful sometimes because I am a person who has a lot of compassion and empathy but I'm also someone that especially when a woman tells me she can't do something because I don't buy that. I grew up pretty much poor and I'm very blessed because my parents did everything that they could. So I had the things that I needed, but I didn't always have the things that I wanted. And my dad fought in the Vietnam and he retired from the military and my mom, she was a humble servant. I mean, she worked at the school. She clean some houses. I even used to go with her. Like, I mean, if she was here, she knew how much money I was making. She'd be like, what? Because back then she worked four hours and made like $20. But I'm her harvest and she sowed some seeds then. And then it was my turn to do it, go through that season. It was for ministry. God blessed me. And the whole time and all the years, I never looked to man. So I am a woman. But I can tell you, I know how to work, have a full-time job, and I wasn't getting child support from my oldest daughter. So the time that my ex-husband and I, that we were together, I mean, yeah, he stepped in and he was a good financial provider. And then he made sure for a year, like while we see the separation, and he didn't push the divorce. I mean, he, he, he always didn't listen to me, but when I, I, did, I did tell him, you need to go ahead and get that attorney. Because it, it, it was serious. Some stuff that he was in was, was just getting serious. And um, the Lord gave him a year to turn around, and he didn't want to surrender. He did not he did not want the ministry. Um, but he, he made sure that we stayed in the home. He paid it. He paid the car. <laughs> and um, was a good provider. But after that year, he was released from that. He wasn't her biological father. And even if he was, I mean, if he would have kept paying child support or whatnot, then that would have been that would have been on him. And certainly if he was a biological father, he would have had a right. But I'm just saying all that. Because I just know the Lord told me not to sign. And I didn't sign until the day we actually showed up at the, the courthouse. And we ended up showing up together. And during that time I came to know him as my husband and as my provider. I've never been a materialistic person. 
And all that to say, again, when a woman says she can't do something, you can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives you strength. And if God is telling you to sign the papers because it's in the best interest of whatever, then do it. Abide in him. But don't allow yourself to get confused or even put yourself in a position of judging someone because you think they're not speaking of God. Because maybe they are. But maybe that message wasn't for you. Do y'all follow me? And some of y'all need to stop clicking on every YouTube video. And especially when it's what you want to hear. Because sometimes you need to hear what you don't want to hear. And then a lot of times, because he is a promise maker and he's a promise keeper and he's faithful to affirm and confirm his word. So that message that I did release, it was an affirmation for a lot of people. But I've learned. It very well wasn't for others. And I'm compelled to share my testimony. Because for anyone who is thinking, whether it's a divorce paper or whatever, st even staying in an unhealthy relationship, even making a choice that um, the enemy wants you to make so it silence your, silences your voice, all because of the need of being financially dependent upon somebody else, that's a bondage. And we shouldn't be led to make choices because of our dependency upon man. We should be dependent upon God. So I earned two degrees within a 12 year period. Obtained a master's of professional counseling. Continued doing ministry. Continued to be a work in progress. Who continually was making progress. Continually came to know more and more of who God was and who he is. And I didn't get financial support from anyone. My One of my oldest sisters helped a lot financially with my oldest daughter in her dance. Because if any of you parents have any dancers in your home, you know that that's costly. And she had a gift of dance and it's part of her ministry. And I did not want her to be a statistic. So I knew. If she was too busy doing what she loved, she wouldn't end up 16 pregnant or on drugs. And she's 24. And I give God all the glory for his hand that has been upon her and where she is even now. And she's not a statistic. She's a beautiful example. As somebody coming from a single mother and that when you are about your father's business and you seek him and you seek his voice and you just follow after him and you follow his ways, he keeps you on the right path. He leads you upon the right path. He makes sure that favor finds you. He holds no good thing from you. So my dependency has never been upon man. It has been upon God. So in earning two degrees, I pretty much continued raising my oldest daughter on my, my own. I mowed my own yard. I cleaned my own house. Did my own laundry. Cooked my own meals. We didn't do vacations. Because everything was going into dance. And thankfully for my sister, sister's help, one of them, you know, she helped to, to make sure that my oldest daughter stayed in that. It was favor. It was the favor of God upon me. And the favor of God upon my daughter. And the Lord had showed me beginning in 2007. And he said, I'm going to show you who I am as your husband and as her father. Because he's a father to the fatherless. So I'm just saying all that. That you cannot be led by fear. And if God is telling you not to sign a divorce paper, you could follow him or you could be led by fear to do whatever. But if he's telling you to sign it, do it. Abide in him. Listen to his voice. You know his voice. And again, in 1 John, I'm going to read it one more time and then I'm going to end. There's no need for anyone to keep teaching you. Once you've heard him, there's no need for you to continue trying to figure out, well, what is he saying? What is he saying? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? That's indecisiveness. You have got to get still. Psalms 46.10, you have got to get still. 
And again, he says, my sheep know my voice and no other voice will they follow. And his voice brings peace. So if you see a title on a video, because you're doing the YouTube ministry thing all day, and it's not lining up to what he told you, don't click into it. And if you click into it, then we have to figure out, did the Holy Spirit lead you there? And if he led you there, and then you heard something that you didn't like, and it brought confusion, why is that? Was it because maybe God was telling you something that you just really didn't want to hear? Because you're led by fear to make another choice. I don't know, people, God. But where I'm at, test the Spirit and seek Him. And if you are not spending more time here in His Word, we got an issue, okay? He'll connect you to people in the pulpit. He'll connect you to people on YouTube to help feed you and encourage you. And even though I know I hear him, what I've learned is very well. Perhaps everything I'm saying is not for everyone. Because certainly if it's bringing confusion, you either should have never clicked on it or you might need to get still and see what is he really telling you. I can only trust Sharing part of my testimony has touched somebody. And certainly nothing I have said is to bring condemnation whatsoever. I just know that as a woman, and now I have two little ones that I've adopted since in 2019. I know him as my husband. And I know him as my father and I know him as my provider. And I don't have no dependency upon man. I'm a confident daughter of the Most High God. I know how to work hard. And I know how to do what I got to do to provide for my family. And ain't no man getting the glory for anything up in my life. But the God I serve shall get all the glory. Now, everybody is different. Everyone has different testimonies. It's different situations. Again, you know his voice. Once you've heard him and you have a standing scripture, stand firm on that and watch the voices that you are listening to because he doesn't bring confusion. The enemy will bring confusion when you do have a word from the Lord and you're standing on it. And I've also learned confusion will come when you're really unsure of what the Lord is telling you. And it's a battle of the flesh and the spirit. So Psalms 46.10, get still, know he's God, listen to his voice, and abide in him, people of God. And certainly, whether my video or whoever's video, take it back to the Holy Spirit. When you go to your table and you're opening your word and you're spending time with your Father, take it back to him. And say, Lord, was that for me? Lord, what more do you have to say about that word for me? Lord, I believe you just spoke to me. So where do I go from here? He speaks. He speaks. So like my friend said, she and I are a lot alike because I don't I don't go around. I don't ask people. <laughs> Some people get to know me. Like they may try to send me a video or something of somebody and I just have to come back. I, I don't have I don't have peace with that. And I'm just at a place that I, I want to hear him for myself. If he leads me to under somebody's voice then um, I recognize that because I recognize his voice and it brings me peace. But I don't need um, affirmation. I go to the feet of Jesus. And just like David, he had sought the Lord when he returned to Ziglag, he had sought the Lord and he asked the Lord, what do you want me to do? Because my family, my children, I, I'm not, everything's gone. And the Lord said, pursue and you will recover all. With nothing missing. So he sought the Lord for instructions. And he obeyed the Lord. And he recovered all. He had to go into battle. Fighting the enemy. To get back what was stolen from him. So we need wisdom people of God. Wisdom. Seek wisdom. Wisdom is your best friend. Wisdom is your best friend. Can't say it enough. Gain the wisdom of God. Walk in the wisdom of God. 
walk in faith, stand firm on the word of God, guard your ears, recognize the different voices, and abide in him and only follow his voice and hold tight to what he has told you. Amen. My brothers and sisters of Christ, I hope this has blessed y'all. Now y'all got a little bit of piece of more about Tammy Lynn and the life of Tammy Lynn. There's so many more testimonies that um, I'm sure I will share in the future. But for now, I've been released to uh, share that part of my life and my journey. And that is because I'm giving him honor and glory for being my husband and my provider and keeping me on the path that he had for me and that my hands was completely free of something he didn't want my hands on, which all these years later, it makes so much more sense because I have a royal restore over kingdom marriages. And I've always told people, don't let the divorce fool you. And I learned there's a difference between an Ishmael and an Isaac. And again, that was not my Isaac. So until next time, people of God, Stay blessed. I will talk to y'all soon. Shalom.